Hey, I hope everybody has had a great week. Um, I've had a pretty good week. I went to OrcCon last weekend, which was a board gaming and tabletop convention in Los Angeles, right down there near the LAX airport. And uh, I got a chance to play a few new board games, which made me very excited, one of which was Cargo Noir. It's the new board game from Days of Wonder. Uh, Days of Wonder doesn't put out a lot of board games, so when they do, it's kind of a big deal, and Cargo Noir is, is no different. They're it really looks beautiful. The art is spectacular on this game. Uh, I got a chance to play it. Gameplay-wise, uh, pretty fun. A lot of downtime, which is not one of my favorite things in board games. Basically, you're a um, smuggler, a cargo smuggler with ships, and you need to take your ships to port and uh, get different kinds of cargo and then make combinations of those to sell them back for profit. Uh, and the way you take your ships to port is that you... It's kind of a, an auction mechanic, but an auction in which it's last man standing. So you put your ships to port with a certain amount of money. If somebody puts more money than you, you have to either take your ship back or add more. So they don't automatically win just by outbidding you. You have an, a chance to uh, up, your, up your bid. So it makes for um, a really interesting mechanic, although oftentimes there'll be a long time before your turn comes up again. So I have some mixed feelings about it. I think I'd like to play it a few more times, but certainly looks beautiful, and um, the team I was playing with had a, had a lot of fun with it. Uh, also been uh, having a lot of, of ramp up for the marathon. Um, I, if you've been watching my Twitter, I did my second 20-mile run yesterday for the uh, LA Roadrunners training program, and it was, it was tough. It was a very cold, windy day. Luckily, we didn't have any more rain. It's been raining a lot here in LA. But um, that was a pretty uh, intense run, but I'm feeling pretty strong and getting excited for March 20th, which is the marathon. Which brings me to my first question you guys sent in. Um, Joshua McGuire sent this question in. Uh, any advice on getting started running, or how did you get started? Right now, even running a mile would likely be impossible. You said that you weren't always a runner, but you are obviously pretty decent at it now. I would be interested in some insight. Well, Joshua, um, if running a mile is impossible now, I would say run less than a mile. Run what you can do. What I learned doing the training program, first of all, I did my first marathon not knowing anything about anything, and it was awful. So I do not recommend that to anybody. Get educated. You can find lots of information on the web, obviously, about running. Um, and I joined this training program after running three marathons and realized I didn't know what the heck I was doing. So I'm sure there are great training programs all over the country and all over the world that you might want to look into. But uh, I'll tell you what I learned from it was that uh, a little running a, a short distance consistently is a lot better than trying to run as far as you can rarely. So I would say get out, decide you're going to go outside for 20 minutes or get on the treadmill for 20 minutes. And uh, if you have to walk some of that, fine. But just try you know do that three days in a row. 20 minutes, as long as I can, you know, as long as I can run. If I need to walk some of it, I'm still doing the 20 minutes. Uh, and do that a few days in a row, take a couple days off and do it again, and then maybe go 30 minutes the next week or a couple weeks down the line. And you can ramp yourself up pretty consistently. I would also say one of the big things that I didn't understand, and I think a lot of people don't, is to eat, to fuel yourself before you run. Um, I used to think, well, I don't want to get a side ache or you know, feel like I have to throw up or something on the, on the run, but your body needs fuel. So it's always good to have something nutritious before you go out and exercise. Um, and you, you, I don't have that side ache problem. I don't have those problems that I thought I would. So um, good luck. I hope that um, I hope you get into running because I've, I've really gotten to enjoying it, and I never thought I would. It's a pretty good part of my life. Uh, next question. Um, Adam Deverell writes, Okay, here's my question. Can you talk about your iPad? What apps do you use? Do you read books, comics on it? Any particular case you have for it? Uh, do you use it mostly at home, or do you go mobile? Any iPad games you would recommend? Lastly, are you planning to upgrade to iPad 2? I, my iPad should be around here somewhere. I'm, I really, here's my iPad. I knew it was around here somewhere. Um, I never go anywhere with my iPad, really. I travel with it. It's a great airplane device. Uh, but as you can see, no, no case. I go uh, naked style. And um, I usually use it at home. Um, I have the Wi-Fi only edition, which is perfectly fine for me. I had no desire to get into another 3G contract. Um, but I use my iPad every single day. 
I use it for all kinds of things. I have a Kindle. I love reading on my Kindle, but this is super convenient to read books. I use the Kindle app on my iPad to read books um, because oftentimes I'll find myself in a place where I don't have a, a light that I can use to illuminate the Kindle. So I, you know, this comes with its own light. Um, I use it to surf the web constantly. I love that it's uh, quick to turn on. You know, you just push a little button, it's on. Um, constantly around the house if I check, want to check email, I use my iPad. I love the iPad. I've, you saw on my blog, um, it's one of my top devices of last year as far as uh, my top 10 list of 2010. I'm super excited about the iPad too. In fact, by the time you watch this, it may have already been announced. Uh, rumor has it it's going to be in the next couple of days here. Uh, and I'm it's a day one purchase for me as long as it has one thing, which is heavily rumored. No, not the camera. I'm not, I don't need a camera on this device, although it could be cool. The thing I'm most excited about is the Retina display. I love the high definition screen on my iPhone 4. If that can be put on the iPad, I will be the happiest man alive. Um, that, you really can tell the difference if you have both the iPad and the iPhone 4 switching back and forth, even just surfing the web. Uh, the resolution goes a long, long way in improving the experience. And I feel like the iPad will be much improved having that high definition display. So hopefully that'll be one of the features that is announced when the iPad 2 is announced. And if so, day one purchase for me, pre-ordered, boom. Um, but I, I use my iPad all the time. I do read comics on it. Um, it's a great way to do that. It's a, it's a I, iPad games. I like a lot of iPad games, but even more than the iOS type action games. I'm not a big fan of the virtual sticks or anything like that. I love what they're doing by bringing board games to the iPad. Uh, Small World is on the iPad. Carcassonne is on the iPad. Settlers of Catan. Scrabble. And they're doing a lot of these Renner Knizia games. Uh, Renner Knizia, one of the most famous, prolific um, board game designers. A lot of his games have come to the iPad. So you have Battle Lines and you have Raw and you have Many, many of his games, I think Money and uh, High Society, great, great games on the iPad, and they're a lot cheaper than you can get them physically. And it's a great way to learn the game and play against AI um, if you are thinking of purchasing the, the board game edition, which, to be honest, I think is a superior way to play the games because uh, the experience is sitting around a table with other people. All right, that does it for the first week uh, on the video blog. Thanks, everybody, for watching and for sending in questions and comments. I've really been appreciating reading those. If you want to send in your question or comment, send it to me at jeffkanata at gmail.com uh, or follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash jeffkanata. All right, see you next week.